Hi, my name is Steve and I'm with True Health and I want to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about today. Uh, invo involves an aspect of health uh, that is so very important to us. And one of the things with uh, True Health, my concept of True Health, is that there are so many factors that kind of combine together. As you put the building blocks together, you're going to achieve a little bit more health, a little bit more health, and it's going to have a symbiotic relationship. So it's kind of like putting the puzzle pieces of a puzzle together and then ending up with something like really nice. So uh, I want to talk about antibiotics and probiotics. And antibiotics and probiotics are so very important. Um, antibiotics amazing discovery that happened years ago um, where they found that it could kill harmful bacteria and that is awesome it has so many uses but it's so overused today um, that we're building up tolerances to this very uh, healthy thing so um, antibiotics actually help people get through a lot of different crises and stuff like that but today Antibiotics are being very over prescribed. And here's an instance. Um, I can count probably each year, probably about six people that I know that actually go to the doctors for a round of antibiotics to help with a cold. Well, colds are made of viruses, and uh, antibiotics kill uh, bacteria. Oops, <laughs> that's not good. You've just received something that um, will not work for you. It may work for you up here, and the placebo response can be very important. But I think sometimes uh, medical industry, someone comes in, doctors are busy. Uh, they come in, someone says, like, please prescribe me some antibiotics. Like, Shh, here you go, um, because they're going to be in, they're going to be out, and. Uh, and the people often, more often than not, will say like, wow, yeah, I start feeling better like right away. Well, typically antibiotic will take like a day or two to actually kind of kick in. If you've taken that and you're feeling good right away, it's like there's some really powerful stuff going on up here too <laughs> uh, that's actually helping you out. Because again, um, it doesn't counteract viruses, only bacteria. So we've got that going on. Plus, um, over the course of many years, people are becoming more resistant to a lot of the antibiotics, and we need these. They're actually very good for our health. But the term antibiotic means uh, no life or without life. So antibiotics actually will kill both the bad bacteria and the good bacteria. Now something also you need to know is we digest hugely with bacteria and yeast that are healthy, or at least they should be healthy if we're operating correctly. And these do us such a favor. They bring nutrients to our body. They actually create serotonin, which actually makes you feel good. So it actually um, sends a serotonin to your body. And uh, it's almost like that rush you get uh, when you've had um, a great workout and you're getting endorphins. Um, it just makes you feel good. So one of the things doctors don't tell you, this really makes me mad, <laughs> is that when you take a round of antibiotics, especially if you're on a prolonged route, you need to take some probiotics. Probiotics means life, it means putting it back, it means getting you back into a healthy state. Uh, I've known people um, that I've talked to that have said like, oh, I've had bad digestive problems, and I'm like, how long? Three years. Well, anything significant that happened three years ago? It's like, well, I um, actually got in an accident, and I was cut up pretty badly, and I had like an infection. Did you take a round of antibiotics? Yes, I did. And how long were you on that? Oh, I was on for like a, a few months. And when did your digestive problems kick in? It's like, oh, yeah. And they see the relationship. And if you can get them on probiotics in some way, shape, or form, they usually get better. But sometimes they're just diagnosed with a digestive disease. 
And that's the end of it. They're kind of on stuff for life for that. They have like moments where it feels a little bit better and then it gets worse. And um, so there's things that you can, you can do about it. There's over-the-counter probiotics, uh, which actually some of them are very effective and some aren't so effective. So really read up on that if you're going to do it. And then you can make probiotics at home by fermentation. So some great books out there. One is Wild Fermentation, and I think the book is like really, really cool. Uh, the guy is this wild, uh, zany guy, very likable guy, um, who actually had some health crisis and stuff, and started fermenting and um, ferments everything. So there's all kinds of things that you can ferment and you can add to your health. But the ones I want to concentrate on, especially, there's a few major ones. Um, is kefir. Kefir is amazing. It's one of the powerhouses of the digestive uh, probiotic world in that it actually has between 20 and 40 strains of healthy bacteria and yeast. That is huge. So you start off with a culture, you put it in the milk, and it cultures it within like 24 to 48 hours depending on how much of this uh, culture you have in it and it produces this really awesome product that is so probiotic. Uh, that's my favorite. Then there's kimchi, which is a fermented cabbage, and that is also uh, very good for you to uh, eat. There's also cultured vegetables that you can do. You can do it with a cabbage base, or uh, usually you have to use a cabbage leaf that actually has this like blue, um, dusty appearance on the outside. So it's the outer leaves that are actually the powerhouse of the bacteria that will start the culture off. And you can actually add one of those leaves into um, carrots or something else that you want to ferment as well. And it converts the sugars and actually produces a mass of healthy bacteria. And that's, by the way, that's the way that a lot of things are preserved in the past. Um, even ketchup used to be fermented at one time and people used it and it was probably a little bit more tiny. Um, there's also uh, kombucha, kombucha tea that you can make that's hugely uh, powerful in helping you recolonize your gut and then there's also things like miso. Um, miso, uh, you probably had um, soup at like a Japanese restaurant that had there was miso soup and uh, very good for you um, also, there are so many other things um, out there that are fermented uh, once you start looking at it and getting into it. But we're going to be doing videos on all of these different things. And I want you to uh, follow the journey with me because really getting your intestinal health back um, is very important because it's 70 to 80 percent of your immunity. And that is such an amazing thing. It is so good to do something that actually creates that immunity for you. And most people that actually have bad um, situations of like not having enough microflora have uh, bad uh, organisms um, getting in there as, as far as bad uh, bacteria and yeast, you're not going to be optimizing, uh, you're not going to be running at an optimal level. And that'll be really bad for you. So. One of the things you really need to do is get on this train of intestinal health because that is one of the pieces of the puzzle that actually adds towards uh, true health. And I promise that if you do have problems and you do some of these probiotics and you do it consistently, you're going to feel better. And then you're going to get that serotonin running into your uh, brain from what's going on and you're going to feel better too um, mentally. So anyway, we've got a lot of exciting videos coming up. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. And I hope you participate in watching some of the ones that are actually going to be coming up soon. And give me feedback either through email or through this um, YouTube production or on Facebook. And um, the website is also www.truehealth.com. T-R-O-O health. Dot com. And uh, be well and enjoy your journey to health and I hope to see you soon.